Powell CPI and earnings. Oh my, that's the outlook for the week of January 8th, 2023. Uh, this is our weekly outlook of markets and profile from the team here at tradetheprofile.com. Kind of setting the stage for the week ahead. Uh, this is part of our process. This is part of the narrative that we're looking at as we plan for active intraday opportunities in the NASDAQ, ES, Russell, and crude. And so this is the beginning of our work every week. It's the same process every week just to kind of figure out, okay, what are the key catalysts ahead? What's the larger story in play? What are key areas of interest? What are we looking at contextually so that we can express ideas inside of that? And so uh, with that, we're going to start with where we typically start off each week. And that is to get uh, reacquainted with what's happening from a macro perspective. And so uh, to talk about the, uh, the macro perspective, uh, let's go here. Okay. And uh, what this is, is this is the S&P 500 uh, relative by percentage to two kind of key metrics. One is the inflation rate. So this is the inflation rate. And you can see that we've had you know, an explosion in inflation over the last year. Uh, we now appear to have had peak inflation and now coming lower However, still relative to where we've been, this is still really high. We have our first CPI reading of the year this week, and that's something that we're going to be mindful of. Second to that, uh, the S&P is here, but next to that is this purple line, which represents the Fed's balance sheet. And so there's high correlation over the last number of years between what the Fed has done in terms of uh, transferring treasury assets to their balance sheet, uh, you know, call it quantitative easing, call it printing money, whatever. But that's that's encouraged people to be active in equities as opposed to uh, other investment vehicles. Well, that's now that's now going away, and we're in a period of what we call quantitative tightening. Which, if I get rid of the uh, the uh, inflation, you can see here just the correlation over the last number of years between the boost in the balance sheet versus the constriction. And the balance sheet. So uh, this is one of the key components, and this is part of how and why last year we talked about this transition from a monetary market to a fiscal market. So a monetary market, the Fed is behind stocks, supporting stocks. When we get into a market like this, where they're shrinking their balance sheet, the, essentially the, the statement is that the Fed is against stocks. And so that's leading to a diminished performance in the equity space. But uh, that's some of the macro key ideas. So the inflation narrative is still there. Uh, we're now coming to earnings season this week, so we're going to be really on watch for how do companies talk about the impact of inflation and higher interest rates for financing corporate operations is going to impact earnings projections down the road. Okay, So that's kind of our, our the macro story um, and where we are. Uh, not much has changed there. Let's now go take a look at the calendar this week and see what potential catalyst there may be ahead of us. And um, get over here. Here's the calendar. Uh, available on the uh, TWP website. Uh, you find that in the sidebar or in the footer. But a couple key things to watch. We get the first little snippet from Powell on Tuesday morning. This is going to come uh, actually before the open. So we'll watch what Powell says and, uh, and pay attention there. Then on Wednesday... We have uh, crude oil inventory, so they're back to their typical Wednesday slot. We'll be watching that if you're trading crude. Thursday, we have the first CPI reading before the open. So that's going to be the you know the really big release. We do have WASDA, which is also in play, which is for grain. So uh, looking at the uh, quick sheet here in a little bit, we'll talk about the fact that both you know the WASDA or both soybeans and, and corn are balanced. Uh, and then Friday, we have another FOMC speaker, uh, Michigan sentiment kind of halfway through the initial balance, uh, some import export before the open. And then we also on Friday begin earnings season. So we have a number of banks that all report before the open on Friday. And that's going to be kind of the first glimmer of, you know, what's the expected impact of higher inflation, higher interest rates on corporate activities and earnings per share. So this is all part of, you know, what we're looking for this week. Uh, definitely going to be paying attention to Powell's speech, going to be paying attention to the range off the CPI. That's going to be really impactful into kind of where we are uh, as we get into the week ahead. So um, with that being said, let's now jump over and start talking about uh, the specific products and uh, get an idea of you know what we're looking to do in those products. And so let's going to start here with the uh, ES. And I'm actually going to jump out here to a larger time frame. Um, just looking at the SPY, which the ES is uh, a derivative of. But uh, here we have uh, daily bars. 
we have quarterly volume profiles, and we have the, the yearly open. So in one of the references that we're going to keep watching as we go forward in the year is this yearly open and where we are uh, relative to that. Uh, you can see that for the last couple of weeks, we've been in a very balanced range here around this high volume node from last quarter. And uh, still in that, I mean, even though with, we had a really strong fri uh, Friday close here, um, we're still in this range. What we're looking for is we're looking for a push up towards the 395 area. That's kind of the expected target initially, so long as we hold this range. And then beyond there, we would look for the next node up here around uh, 415. That would be the next spot uh, and would challenge where we saw um, you know, some of the last uh, impact of uh, FOMC or CPI at the end of December. Should we come back through this area, then the destination would be 368 and then on towards uh, new lows. So that's, you know, we're, we're, looks appears like after non-farm payrolls last week, we really started to make a move, but we're going to keep watching this open because um, when we when we zoom out and get, kind of get a picture of where we are, just looking at last year's profile. So 395 is, is the most traded price of last year. Uh, that's, you know, key resistance, the upside that slow the auction. So, uh, you know, very possible we go up here and then come back through with CPI and that accelerates us to the downside. So we really need to get above 395 to get to the next area. And then once we're above 395, we want to defend it. So, you know, we would kind of defend this area to open the opportunity for us to go higher, um, which, you know, again, we talked about this last week, but the, the range for this year uh, in the SPY, the expected range, gets us at a, an expected high up to 470, but to the downside, uh, it's 292. <laughs> so quite quite a large range that we're expecting this year. Um, and, you know, we've just got started. So that's uh, giving us an idea of where we are. Now let's uh, kind of drill down and look at uh, a couple different things. So one, we're just gonna look at the uh, posture of the auction and see where we are. So this is the quick sheet. You can download this every week as a link related to this video. Um, but we've got a, a change in posture. So price above the five day equal to the 20 day. So basically this is a break from balance type of trade. We're looking for follow through higher this week. Um, still expecting about 75 points per day, um, 168 points for the week. So that puts a weekly expected high at 4,033. Weekly expected low at 3,797. Uh, weekly Monthly expected high 4,109. Monthly expected no low 36. 12. So, you know, what does that look like specifically? So here at the monthly volume profile charts, I have overlaid here the last number of CPI releases just so that we can kind of see the impact of these releases and how much velocity we've had on them um, as we've gone on. This this one back here in October was, you know, really kind of the, the big one that kind of maps with that peak inflation. And then we've, you know, continued to have high inflation. Uh, this one came off of a test of last year's VWAP. Um, and here's this last week, right? So shortened week last week ended with a push away from balance um, on the way higher. Now, relative to last month, you know, la the most traded price from last month uh, still down here. So, you know, as far as last month goes, we got imbalance to the downside. Uh, but as long as we can stay above this area of balance, we're looking for the auction to push in this direction and uh, see how far we can go. Uh, here, looking at a weekly basis, so let's kind of, jump down here. We can see how we really are just still stuck in this range. So even though we had a really, really strong move on Friday off of non-farm payrolls, uh, we really haven't made any new territory. So we're going to be watching. We're going to be watching this to start the week. Can we accept out here and start pushing towards decision levels higher up towards that uh, 390, uh, you know, 4K area, which maps that 395 SPY? Um, we're going to be watching that we stay above 3861. We traded back and forth across that all week last week, and we have a very poor low in this auction. So, you know, be very mindful if we ever come back through this area, uh, watch for us to accelerate to the downside. We definitely caught some shorts who were expecting the break and then had to cover quickly. And, you know, this is part of our plan on Friday. We posted on Twitter you know, the expectation was if we can't break from balance, then we look for the auction to have confidence to go the other side. So now we're testing this side. The question will be, can they get acceptance or will they test above and then reject? If we reject, we're going to go where? Right back to the middle and then likely go test the other side. We do have enough catalyst this week with PAL speaking, with CPI, that we can be kind of all over the place. So um, be mi be mindful of that as, as the week goes. Um, as far as our uh, expected ranges for the uh, the week, let me just clear out some of these 
uh, drawings. So I think we can see, you know, weekly expected low is down here at the bottom of that bracket. You know, overall, as long as we stay above 3840, you know, looking for the, the buyers to hold and take us higher. Uh, and then to the upside, uh, we've got that weekly expected high. Let's just go back to the quick sheet here real quick. So that weekly expected high at 40.33. So um, right up here computed. So that that's, and, you know, certainly we could, we could get to the 2021 VPOC on the way. So that's the expectation. As we start the week on Monday, um, just looking here at Friday's profile and the day type. So this is a multi-distribution trend day multi-distribution trend day, uh, we would expect that if we open in range uh, with the VPOC here or here, to, you know, really too close, but the two close prices, but really the VPOCs here, uh, we will expect on, on Monday that we'll stay north of 3880. And we will look for the auction uh, to push and make new RTH highs on towards the next decision level, which I believe is at... 39.68, um, and that's within the, the expected daily range. So 39.68 would be the push up there. Um, if we gap higher, uh, that would be a gap from this balance. So if you know gap holds, we're looking towards 39.95. Uh, gap failure would come back to this price. And if we are accepting below this distribution, we'll look for a move back towards 38.60. So we got a couple different scenarios there as the week starts. But um, overall, um, looking for us to uh, keep moving higher uh, in in the near term into some of those releases as we begin the week. Okay, that takes care of the ES. Let's talk about the NASDAQ, shall we? So we're going to get over here and look at the NQ. We'll look at this one on a long-term basis as well. Um, and here... Very, very poor low in the in the queues. I mean, we can just see uh, there's this 750 gang. We got to watch this price. Uh, 750 is going to break at some point, and it's going to be fugly uh, when it does. So um, be be mindful of that as we move ahead. Notice that we did get above this high volume node around 11,099, but still in a, in a balancing range. You know, breakout could take us towards 11,799 uh, as, as kind of the key reference there. Um, looking at the quick sheet, you know, where are we got there? Same same posture as the ES. Uh, 945 is going to be our key balance reference to watch. Still looking at about 193 points uh, per session, 144 points in the first hour, um, 400 points for the week, 11,400 to the upside, 10,810 to the downside. Uh, let's go look at this on a monthly basis. Okay. Um, here's the big pop off of balance. So the auction was balanced. Now we're moving above that. Uh, still very imbalanced to the downside in December. Uh, December was pretty much a engulfing month. Um, however, what are we doing? We're moving higher first. That's fine. This also is into a prior CPI range on our way toward last month's VWAP and that most traded price to the upside. Here you can see our weekly expected high would be up to the top of this range. So as long as we hold this area, we're looking for the auction to move higher uh, into PAL and into CPI. If we revisit these lows, then we're looking for a push toward, uh, well, not only you know the weekly expected lows, but um, also I think we'll push past that and go to uh, 10,600 as kind of the next area down. If we look at this on a two hour, um, we can see again how Despite the big move on Friday off of non-farm payrolls, we are also in just as tight a range as possible. Uh, went from one side of the range to the next. So what are we going to watch? We're going to watch for a break into a new move out of here. Or once we break, we're going to monitor and see if we revisit. If we revisit, then we're going to be coming right back here. And, you know, it'll be interesting to see if we're back to this price in front of like a CPI or Powell. Um, you know, then it's back to the edges again and then looking for breaks beyond that. So keep this bracket in play or in mind as you go ahead in the week. Uh, also, multi-distribution trend day, um, looking for higher prices toward 
the daily expected high. Uh, we do have a naked VPOC up here at 11,335. That's totally doable. So that that's a, especially if we break outside of the range and hold, very easy for us to get up here. Uh, that would push the daily expected high a little bit, um, but you know, totally, totally doable on a break from balance. You can see the composite where we are. Um, if we're opening in range, we're going to look for early weakness to join for, you know, like a, a day after trend trade for new RTH highs and the breakout. If we gap, gap holds goes towards 332, gap failure comes back here to 11,008. And then acceptance below comes right back to where the five day is. Okay. So that's what we're looking for in the NASDAQ. Let's move now to the Russell, um, who has been a fun little guy. Um, let's jump over to the Russell chart here. Russell's far more balanced than the, the ES and the NASDAQ. And this is you know partly a function that there's the components within the Russell that benefit from higher interest rates. Um, we're, you know, working our way back towards kind of the, you know, first big significant node here at 1840 and a revisit of where the last big selling came in. So, so far we've got sellers from that December stuff that's still holding us lower. Uh, this could just be responsive activity. We'd have to get above that to break out to the upside and challenge those sellers. Also, if we revisit here, we do have a poor low for the year last year um, that sets the stage for us to push. Um, ultimately, you know, should, you know, should we roll over and let's back out here, you know, ultimately the destination is down here towards uh, 1646. And then if we really go wide, um, we've got areas down here around 1550. So you can kind of see how fat and thick this is um, as we're trying to push higher to start the week. Uh, very, very balanced on a monthly basis. You can see, you know, also into some of those prior CPI ranges, but holding 1760, the key reference. Let's look at the quick sheet here real quick. Same posture, price above the five day and the 20 day. That means we're looking long as long as we stay above those references. So any week, early responsive activity, we're looking for that to be purchased, um, you know, unless there's velocity to that. But 1783 to 60 is, is kind of the chop zone, but supportive above that. Looking about 22 points in the first hour, 33 points for the session, 75 points for the week, 1856 to the upside, 1750 to the downside. So uh, looking at that on a weekly basis, um, we are very much still in the, you know, this three week balance range inside of last month's prices, but definitely watch and mark this 1763. So where, you know, where we, where we move from there, in fact, I'm going to move my alert up to that price. Um, should we revisit that? That's going to open a door for us to go challenge the lows around that 1730. Um, totally, totally doable from a, a weekly basis. To the upside, we've got last month's VWAP. Um, we've got 18, up to that 1840 kind of key composite node to the upside. Um, could easily get there within you know tomorrow. And then we've got you know weekly expected high up here around 1850. Same story as the others. If we can break from balance, you know, we're looking for a move up into this direction. That's the you know, pretty easy target works within the weekly expected ranges. Failure comes back to here and failure after testing above will likely traverse again, accelerate below the non-farm payrolls and revisit these lows and push for new yearly lows. Keep an eye on the open of the year right around here at 1780. We're carrying that forward. Um, as we go looking at the profile from Friday, you can see multi-distribution, poor high. So expecting higher prices, challenging the gap and selling that came and got us down here, you know, from the end of December um, on toward, you know, naked VPOC up here around 1855. So that's kind of the key destination. Uh, if we can get some early week drift would be to that upside. Would expect that we would stay above, you know, 1785, uh, 1780 to start the week in the Russell. Okay. So that takes care of that. Let's now go talk about crude oil, shall we? Um, last product that we look to express ideas in a day time frame, And let's go look at crude. All right, uh, here we are to start the week. So last year we, we kick saved above the 2021 highs. We're on our way 
back towards the most traded price of the year around 87, 80, 88 dollars per barrel. Let's zoom in here and see kind of how we've uh, started the week or started the year. We need to update this because this is not showing all of how we started. Uh, started the year pushing lower. Um, we were looking for a pushback up here to 88. 40 last week as long as we kind of held there was a there was a zone right here we, as long as we held that we were looking for the push here very swiftly took that out and and pushed and accepted lower so um lows of the year are vulnerable or lows basically of the, of the last quarter are vulnerable um as we start the week the downside is in play um let's go look at the quick sheet and just get a sense of what that looks like here All right, so we've got balanced posture. 73.70 is the key reference that we're looking for, higher or lower. Uh, what does that look like? We're doing about you know $2.59 per day. Let's go take a look at what that looks like uh, in the posture here. On a monthly chart, you can see the balance on the five day and 20 day. Let's get rid of these extra drawings on a weekly basis. Um, you can see the range. There's, a, there's an early range that we're going to be watching to start the week. Now, uh, we always think that the bell curve is our friend. What does that mean? Is that we're looking for the auction to get to equilibrium. So based on how we are right now, we're kind of like this. So to get to equilibrium, we would continue out this way. So as long as we stay below 75, path least resistance is to the downside and to retest these lows of a larger bracket area that we're in. However, if we can get above last week's VWAP, we could uh, essentially build this out this way, um, which would put us back towards the uh, open of the year and back on our way towards 88. Okay, so I have to watch that uh, CPI or EIA on Wednesday will be in play. But this is definitely balanced, which that means that we can go either direction. However, when we look at this from where we came from, we know that it could you know, it does give a, a little bit of a nod to the downside, at least to start. Okay, so be watching that. Um, and then also based on how we closed on Friday, um, three days, we, we gapped down into this area. Here you can see that this area tested up to that weekly VWAP and then pushed back to balance, closing in the middle. So, you know, unless we can get kind of above value area high here, we're looking for pushes towards the bottom of the bracket to start the week. So we'll see where we are when we open. And that kind of gives us an idea of what we're looking for in those four products. Okay, now uh, with those four covered, um, let's see what else we've got as, as far as other ideas that are in focus and in play. And uh, the first place that I want to go is just to talk about um, the VIX curve. Okay, so you know where are we relative to the week, especially coming into Powell and uh, the CPI this uh, in, in the coming week. A couple references that uh, I've added here. I've, I've started to add the 2023 anchored VWAP, so we'll be watching that. Last week we had the short end of the curve was inverted, and then it reverted as the week ended. Um, so what does that what does that look like? So let's let's actually expand um, some of these. So we, you know when I look at the curve, I'm looking at the relationship of the VIX across a couple different expirations, and in fact. If you want to see that, you can go down here. All right, so there's there's the VIX, which is a 30-day instrument. There's the nine-day VIX, three-month, six-month, one year. Uh, in a in a normal environment, you're going to find that the nine-day is the cheapest and the one year is the most expensive. Uh, there are periods where we get fearful. When we get fearful, what happens is that participants go to the short duration stuff first, and then eventually cascade to where they're paying more in nine days than they are one year out. Well, look at where we are right now. So what, what this is is basically saying that we're pretty complacent because we're, we're in a normal orientation across the exp uh, expiration, with, ex with the exception that the nine days is just a little bit more elevated than the 30 day. So what does that mean in terms of where we are in the S&P um, relative to last year's VWAP and as we start the year? It means that we, we have underpriced risk. So that means that if, if we get negative news uh, going forward, the potential for us to bring in put buyers is high, uh, which would lead to lower prices. So people buy puts, 
dealers sell the puts, dealers sell futures to offset those sold puts. And that is what takes us lower. And it's until we get this thing really inverted that we have a solid bottom. So I don't, I'm not looking at this S&P uh, rally on Friday as something that's going to have really great staying power. I think we revisit those prices. You know, we're going to likely rally initially to start the week and, you know, get into early seasons. But ultimately, you know, we're going to come back. Why do I say that? It's because we have a complacent curve. So this is the combined curve between these two. And we're, you know, kind of in the middle. Uh, when we're Below the red line, we're very complacent. When we're above the blue line, we're very fearful. You can see how that maps, right? When you're fearful, that leads to rallies. Why is that? Because rally or markets rally when everybody's scared. Uh, they fall when nobody's scared. So, you know, kind of where we are right now is we're in a little bit of a yeah kind of area. Uh, expecting that to firm up more as we get into earnings season and the CPI and Powell and all that kind of stuff. But we're going to be watching this curve because what, you know, what I'm really looking for is I'm looking for the first really big flush and fear of the year where we get this thing really good and inverted. Um, and then that becomes the first real good bottom of the year. Or, you know, we get to a place where we're really fearful. We had that, you know, towards the end of the year. And then that led to selling off as we went from complacency and you know got a little bit of a hedging into that. In fact, we even inverted on the short term. So a little bit meh. We're going to be watching the relationship to this curve as it goes on, especially past these events, and see this, where this takes us up into earnings and then you know our first OPEX of the year that is is next week. Okay, so that's you know kind of one idea that I'm tracking. Um, another idea that I'm tracking is the relationship between. Um, the different indexes. So I'm looking here at a six month basis and I'm looking at the performance between the Russell, the ES and the NASDAQ. And what do I see is I see that there's a significant gap between two highly correlated products. You know, there are very, there's shared pro, shared names that are in both the NASDAQ and the ES. They're not shared names in the ES and the Russell. So when you see a wide sloth, you know, sloth between these, that tells me that the NASDAQ is underpriced relative to the ES. I can construct a relative value spread off of this where I'm essentially long the NASDAQ and short the ES and looking for those two to converge. So I'll be looking for opportunities to put that uh, trade on um, you know, sometime this year or sometime this, um, this week uh, if given the opportunity. So those are kind of two key ideas. So one, I'm looking at the, the timing of this uh, to establish some more duration, longs or shorts. Uh, right now, because I'm meh, I'm not really – position one way or the other. I'm kind of waiting for more information, um, but I am looking to express the idea between the width of this spread. Okay. So those are kind of some ideas that are in focus and will be tracked uh, as we go along. Okay. Um, let's talk development focus because after all, I mean, we're a development firm and we look to help uh, developing traders build skill. And uh, this week, the development focuses on the idea of the contrast between an auction narrative and a playbook. Okay, and so like, what what does that mean? Uh, this this outlook that we do each week is essentially a narrative, right? We're storytelling. We're we're building a story of how we believe that the auction is going to play out, uh, how we think it'll behave at certain prices. But that isn't necessarily a trade. Right. This is part of the contextual understanding. So uh, it's important if you're if you're doing a daily plan and you're, and you're working on your, your process, but you're finding you're still struggling at finding out when do I execute? When do I not? Uh, you know, when is it time to, to be part of this? When is it not? Is, is to understand the difference between narrative and playbook. OK, so what what is the difference of these two things? So one a narrative is auction context. So that that's areas of expected auction behavior. It's levels of interest. It's catalysts like, you know, FOMC or CPI or earnings stuff like that. It's the macro impact. What's the macro story? It's this inflation interest rate story. Well, then there's a playbook. So playbook is a categorized and named auction pattern that honors the four questions we ask before we place a trade and can be recognized and leveraged inside of the narrative. So, uh, you know, these are a number of the playbooks that I have, playbook trades. They all have characteristics to them and they allow me to have what's called one good trade. So I, you know, I track all of my trades by these. Um, in fact, if we go and look at uh, how this last week played out, um, let me just kind of pull up the trade log for this week. Um, get over to 
here. Um, so th this is, you know, trades that I took last week on a one lot basis. Uh, what was the playbook trade? Uh, and that gives me, you know, ideas and like, what was the initial target? So that's the the, the one, first question is, what's the target? What was the entry price? How would I know that I'm wrong? That's initial stop. Where did I exit? Um, and what was the date? This is crucial at helping me know uh, what I'm looking to do because my belief is that the, as uh, Mike Belfore says in his book, One Good Trade, that your thesis, so your narrative, plus the setup from your playbook, plus confirmation from the tape or order flow in the fight for price equals one good trade. So if you want to increase your confidence in your execution and performance, understand the difference between your, your thesis or, or your narrative and then the playbook setup that you're looking to express. Now, if you are uh, don't yet have uh, a playbook set up or know what those are, uh, here's the way to kind of go appro approach that. First, uh, go back and categorize your trades. So give them a name um, and, and name them by the driving input. So whatever is like kind of the initial thing or the, the key input that you make a decision on, name that trade that thing and then add additional characteristics to that trade of saying, okay, well then what are the four questions? How would I answer the four questions when I take that trade? You know, what's the target when this certain, you know, thing happens in the auction? Uh, what am I willing to risk relative to that target? How will I know that I'm right? How will I know that I'm wrong? Uh, track the performance based on the specific setups and then find your anchor trade. So as you're practicing these and, and trying to figure out, you know, what is your playbook and, and seeing which ones you have good performance on, which you aren't, you're essentially going to get down to finding the one trade, the one, one trade, that's the one that you have high confidence that, hey, if things are going sideways, if I'm in drawdown, I'm trying to, if I wait for this one, I can write the ship. Okay, I can get, I can rebuild my confidence and get back where I need to be. Once you have that anchor trade, that's the point to go live. So, you know, the, the discovery of all of these, uh, you know, playbook setups should all be done from our perspective in a simulated or practice environment until you've got the confidence to execute that in a live environment. And, and you, know, you can you can do that without sacrificing um, uh, your, your, your ultimate performance by doing this in a practice. You know, let, let the emotion challenge and all of the mindset stuff happen once you're executing on a playbook that you actually know the edge and you're confident in. So narrative playbook, right? Need both. And you need to know the difference between them. Finding a lot of traders on our desk and those that we've talked to that are, you know, kind of looking for some additional support saying, hey, I, you know, I'm getting struggled because I don't know when to trade, when not to trade. Um, every price is actionable because within a narrative, if you're trading narrative, all times, all prices could potentially be act or be actionable. And it's going to cause decision fatigue. It's going to cause decision paralysis. You're like, I don't know, should I? But if you, if you add playbook inside of that, well, then now all of a sudden you have the opportunity to be able to go, okay, so I know what's happening contextually. I, now I'm kind of going through the Rolodex in my head of the different playbooks that I can express inside that narrative. Now I know what to wait for. I know when to wait for, and I know how to participate in that structure. Guarantee if you do that, you're going to find that uh, your performance is going to improve tremendously. So hope that helps. Um, if you need a reminder of those four questions, you can find that tradeprofile.com forward slash four questions. I will be active on Twitter this week, uh, asking questions, answering questions, uh, giving insight. Uh, if you'd like to, you know, ask about your playbook trades, uh, it, are, do you have playbook trades or not? You know, are what you're doing narrative versus playbook? Schedule a free insight session with us. Uh, those are available to be scheduled via the link of this video or on our website. Um, and if you want to do some more specific development, you can do that on our development desk via one of our pathway options. Uh, shout out to edgeclear.com and windowtrader.com who are the software platforms that you saw here uh, in addition to TradingView. Uh, love the guys at EdgeClear and Window Trader. And I think you should check them out uh, if you have not already. And then finally, uh, for those of you who are working through the pathway, uh, we'll see you in Slack for our intraday discussions and our weekly development sessions for a pretty awesome and active week. So, hey, thanks, everybody. Thanks for uh, your attention. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope this has given you some insight. Uh, always love to hear how this is helping you you know, kind of move the, the needle on your trading performance and uh, your experience in the markets. And so if we can be a help for you in any way, uh, let us know. And uh, we'll be back next week with another outlook. Peace.